guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I'm the Furry Family Coach, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So a while back, I did another video on my channel about why dogs, why, why does your dog follow you? I think the title is, why does my dog follow me? <laughs> and overwhelmingly, the comments, while they're all a little bit different, all basically say the same thing. So I wanted to update that video or provide an update for that video on how you can help your dog to maybe not follow you around quite so much. So over, like I said, overwhelmingly on this video, people are like, oh my gosh, my dog follows me 24 seven and I can't handle it anymore. It's so frustrating. I can't walk into the kitchen. I can't go to the bathroom. I can't handle it anymore. <sighs> First of all, I need to kind of calm myself a little bit because that those comments, they make me a little bit sad and they make me a little bit frustrated. And so I really wanted to talk about basically the whole premise of that video is that like your dog loves you and wants to be around you. Dogs are pack animals. They are, they're bred, like they're genetically designed just like humans are to live in family units. And when you have a dog in your home, they are part of your family. They want to be with you because that's how, like that's how they would live normally in the wild. Dogs live in groups, in packs, in family units. And so that's kind of the basis of that whole video, just in a nutshell. But what I'm realizing is that I need to expand a little bit more on what you can do to help your dog maybe not follow you around quite so much. I don't think it's reasonable, first of all, to expect to have a dog and then never want to be around you. I mean, unless you're a completely horrible human being and you're terrible to them, then they probably don't want to be around you. But if that's the case, you would not be watching this video. Like you would not be looking up videos about, you know, how to better care for your dog if you're a terrible human being. So I don't think that's you if you're watching this video. If I'm wrong, go ahead and post it in the comments below and let me know. But I, I, I feel like that's not you. So what what can we do here like one thing i have noticed as a trainer as just somebody in the world who has you know a facebook profile and has friends on facebook with dogs who, who have dogs and one thing i've learned is that overwhelmingly people are not prepared to socialize their dogs properly when they buy or adopt a dog, especially a young puppy. But even if you adopt an older dog, there's no guarantee that they were properly socialized and you will need to work on that some more. Now, of course, socialization is easier and quicker when you are working with a puppy, but it can still be done in older dogs. It just takes a lot more time and patience and that's okay. So I think a lot of these issues really stem from improper socialization and not exposing your dog to, you know, a lot of new environments, not training with them. And I don't mean that your dog has to be an obedient robot. That's not what I'm about. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, I'm not about that. Like the kind of dog training that I do is very much like peaceful coexistence between you and your dog in a home. It's not about having an obedient robot sitting by your side by any means. Like that's not what I do, but you know, a peaceful coexistence and helping your dog understand the behaviors that you expect in them very much like how you would raise a child to be polite and have manners. Like that's the kind of training that I do with dogs be, as a pet parent coach, I don't train service dogs. I don't train, you know, police dogs. I'm not, I'm not into turning dogs into robots. They are sentient beings. They have their own emotions, their own feelings, their own thoughts, and they should be able to live a happy existence. But we do need to teach them some manners, and that is our responsibility to do so. So definitely, um, if you if you clicked on this video. I want you to go through the beginner dog training series and it's a it's a completely free video series right here on youtube check the link in the description below for the playlist start from the beginning work with your dog all the way through and one of the i think it's the second to last video 
I talk about new environments. And I kind of talk about new environments here and there, um, kind of sprinkled through the videos, but I, I, I expand upon it a little bit more in one of the final videos because it is so important to socialize our dogs. And one of the reasons that we do this, of course, it's because we need to be able to have our dog's attention. So, you know, in, in a life-saving um, circumstance, but also a lot of these things we're doing when we allow our dog to win, when we allow, when we reward our dog and we set them up for success, we're building confidence in our dogs. And that's something that a lot of dogs are lacking. Um, and I and I do truly believe that it is because we're not pro appropriately socializing them just generally. Like a lot of people are just not they, they don't realize it until it's too late that they didn't socialize their dog appropriately. Some people never once in their life even try to train their dog to sit or stay or anything like that. So um, a lot of these things really, they boost your dog's confidence level, which in turn makes them a little more independent. Not completely, they still wanna be around you. They're still pack animals but they do give them that that feeling of self-value of self-worth and gives them more confidence that they can be alone but you know they can be alone even if it's for short periods of time um that being said i also want i, I also invite you to watch a couple of other videos on my channel about separation anxiety because while I don't feel that every dog, I certainly don't think that every dog has separation anxiety, I think there is a growing number of dogs that have separation anxiety. And this, again, is because we are not appropriately socializing our, our dogs. We're not giving them anything other than us, right? They, they sit in our house, in our apartment, wherever we are with us, and we're everything to them. And to, to our dog, I mean, that that basically is the life of a dog, but we can give them more than that. We can give them friends that they go and play on play dates with in the park. We can give them new and exciting adventures. We can take them to Hope Depot. We can take them to a park or a beach. We can train with them outside on the street. We can do so many things with them um, that are that's just gonna give them more to life than just us. But if you are curious, if maybe your dog does have separation anxiety, check out the videos that I'm gonna link in the description below. There are a couple of different videos. One, how to tell if your dog has separation anxiety. And if you do feel your dog does have separation anxiety, the next video is going to be about how you can work with your dog to overcome that separation anxiety. So um, if, you, if you're if you curious about that, if you feel like your dog may have some sort of separation anxiety, if they are self-harming, if they're trying to jump out and claw through windows or doors, you know, some of these are these are going to be really some of the more serious cases of separation anxiety. Check out the uh, links in the description below to those videos. And another thing that you can do is, and everyone should be doing this, regardless of whether you are concerned about how much your dog follows you or not, provide adequate enrichment for your dog. So many dogs today are not getting enough mental and physical stimulation. So you may take your dog out for a walk three times a day, but how much mental stimulation are you actually giving them? Are you are they are you playing with them? Are you playing fetch? Are you um, doing playing tug of war? How many times a day do you play with them? How how do you feed them? Can you maybe toss their food out so they're hunting for it or scavenging for it? Can you hide their food so that would be more like hunt, hunting their food if you hide it? Now there are so many scent games. There are so many different things that you can do with your dog to help improve their life and provide more, in, uh, especially mental enrichment in their lives. Again, boosting their self-confidence and making them feel better about themselves because they're, they're doing something, they're accomplishing something, they're getting that reward at the end of whatever the activity is. So we're, we're building our dogs into more independent, happier, more self-confident individuals. And this is really what is lacking in so many homes with dogs, with cats too, um, but maybe to a lesser degree because dogs, like I said, are very social creatures. They are pack animals. So if they're not getting 
everything they need, if they're not getting enough mis uh, mental stimulation, if they're not getting enough physical exercise, they are going to look to express all of these feelings they have inside and uh, in, may, in other ways that you may not love as much. So let's, let's really think about how much physical and mental enrichment our dogs are getting on a daily basis, how much socialization they have had or they're currently getting. And um, if you have any questions about this, please post in the comments below. Also check the link in the description to join the group, join the family. There are thousands of other pet parents in the group that are just waiting for you to join. Share what's going on with you, with your dog, uh, so we can help you. Or maybe you have figured out something really awesome that helps your dog and you can share it in the group for to help others as well. So definitely uh, check that out. If you, again, if you have any questions at all, please post in the comments below. But I really hope this answers a lot of the questions that I was getting on the other video. Um, because there's so much more that we need to be doing for our dogs than just setting them in our apartments or our, our houses and feeding them twice a day and saying, why aren't you happy? Like there's so much more that they need and we need to be providing to them. You know, they are our responsibility. Dogs are some of the most wonderful creatures and we really, they deserve nothing but the best. Everything that we can do and provide for them, they provide so much to us just in being here. You know, we need to be able to provide everything they need. <laughs> um, to be able to live a f full, happy life. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I do hope to hear from you. I do hope this helps you, um, especially if you're having some issues, if you're frustrated with some of the behaviors that your dog is, is, exhibiting. Oh, before you go, if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it, turn it gray. When you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, give this video a thumbs up. It is the best compliment that you can provide. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video. But before I do, there's going to be another video popping up right about here. It's definitely going to help build that bond between you and your dog. So I definitely recommend checking that one out next. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.